Our words have creative power. Whenever we speak something, either good or bad, we give life to what we are saying. Too many people say negative things about themselves, about their families, and about their futures. They say things such as, I'll never be successful. This sickness will get the best of me. Business is slow. I don't think I will make it. Flu season is coming. I'll probably catch it. They don't realize they are prophesying their futures. The scripture says we will eat the fruit of our words. That means we will get exactly what we've been saying. Here's the key. You've got to send your words out in the direction you want your life to go. You cannot talk defeat and expect to have victory. You cannot talk a lack and expect to have ambidence. You will produce what you say. If you want to know what your life will be like five years from now, just listen to what you're saying about yourself. With our words, we can either bless our futures or we can curse our futures. That's why we never say, I'm not a good parent, I'm unattractive, I'm clumsy, I can't do anything right, I'll probably get laid off. No, those thoughts may come to your mind, but don't make the mistake of verbalizing them. The moment you speak them out, you allow them to take root. There have been plenty of times where I've thought something negative, and I'm just about to say it, but I catch myself and think, no, I'll zip it up. I'm not speaking to feed into my future. I'm not speaking failure over my life. I will turn it around and speak favor into my future. I will declare, I'm blessed, I'm strong, I'm healthy. This will be a great year. When you do that, you are blessing your future. I have written this book of 31 declarations so you can bless your future, one day at a time, one month at a time. My hope is that you will take just a moment each day to bless your future with one of these positive, inspiring, and encouraging declarations. If you read one declaration and story each day, I believe you will put yourself in a position for God's blessings. When we are looking to renovate the former compact center in Houston so it could serve as the new Lakewood Church, our architect told us the project would cost millions more than we originally estimated. I was shocked by the figures they gave us. After I got up off the ground, I thought, that's impossible. I could never raise that much money. There's no way that will happen. My thoughts were there, but I knew better than to verbalize them. My attitude was, if I prophesy my future, I want to prophesy something good. I'm not going to say what I feel. I'm not going to say what it looks like to the real world. No, I'm saying what God says about me. My declaration was, God is supplying all of our needs. He is Jariah Jehat, the Lord of Provider. This may seem impossible, but I know God can do the impossible. Where God gives vision, he will always provide provision. I made sure to have a report of victory when we saw this dream comes to pass. Proverbs 18.21 says, Life and death are in the power of our tongue. What are you saying about your future? What are you saying about your family? What are you saying about your finances? Make sure the words you are sending out in the direction you want your life to go. If you're a baseball fan, you probably know who Jose Lima was. During the 1990s, he was the star pitcher for the Houston Astros. One season, he won 21 games and was considered one of the best pitchers in the league. But something interesting happened. When the Astros moved from the Astrodam to the new bar park downtown, the fence in the left field was much closer than the fence in the Astrodam. And of course, this favors the hitters. It makes it more difficult on the pitchers. First time Jose Lima went to the new ballpark, he stood on the mound. When he looked out into the left field and saw how close the fence was, First words out of his mouth were, I'll never be able to pinch in here. The fence is way too close. Do you know he went from being a 21-game winner to being a 16-game loser? It was one of the biggest negative turnarounds in Astros history. What happened? He prophesied his future. Those negative thoughts came, and instead of ignoring them, he made the mistake of speaking them out. When you speak it out, you're giving your life to your faith. Proverbs 6 2 says, We are snarred by the words of our mouth.
When I was a boy, there was a gentleman who owned the company that took care of our church grounds. He was a very nice man, kind and friendly, but he always had a negative report. Every time I talked to him, he told me how hard life was and how business was slow and his equipment was breaking down. He was having problems at home. One of his children was acting up on and on. I saw him twice a week for probably ten years. I cannot remember one time where he did not have a negative report. And I'm not making light of his situation. The point is, he was prophesying defeat. He was cursing his future. He didn't realize he was being snarred by the words of his mouth. Sadly, when he was about 55 years old, he became very sick. He spent the next two or three years in and out of hospitals. He ended up dying a very sad and lonely death. I couldn't help but think he had been predicting this sad end his entire life, because he was always talking about how we would make him make it to his retirement years. He got what he was calling in. Now, you may be in a difficult time right now, but let me challenge you. Don't use your words to describe the situation. Use your words to change the situation. Use this book as your guide for declaring your victory each day. Declare health, declare favor, declare abundance. You just spoke into your future. If you get up in the morning and feel the blahs, don't ever say, this will be a lousy day, I don't want to go to work, I'm tired of dealing with these children. No, get up and say, this is going to be a great day, I'm excited about my future, something good is going to happen to me. You should send your words out in the direction you want your life to go. Maybe you've been through a disappointment, a relationship didn't work out didn't get the promotion you were hoping for, but instead of complaining by saying, well, I should have known it, I never get any good breaks. Just my luck. No, your declaration should be, I know when one door closes, God will open up another door. What was meant for my harm, God would use to my advantage. I'm not only coming out, I will come off better than I was before. Have a report of victory. Here's what I learned. You believe you say about yourself more than what anybody else says. That's why on a regular basis we should say, I'm blessed, I'm healthy, I'm strong, I'm valuable, I'm talented. I have a bright future. Those words go out of your mouth and come right back in your own ears. Over time, they will create the same image on the inside. I read about a doctor in Europe who had some very sick patients. They had been treated by traditional means, but their health had not been improved. So he gave them a very unusual prescription. He had them say three or four times an hour, I'm getting better and better every day in every way. For the next few months, he had remarkable results. Many of those had patients had not improved with traditional medications, but all of a sudden, they began to feel better and better. What happened? As they heard themselves saying over and over, I'm getting better, I'm improving, my health is coming back. Those words began to create new image on the inside. Before long, they started seeing themselves through strong, healthy, and whole. Once you get a picture of it on the inside, then God can bring it to pass on the outside. You could see your whole life go a new whole new level if you just zip up the negative words and start speaking faith and victory into your future. I know people who are always tired and run down. They're constantly saying, I'm so tired, I just don't have any energy. They've talked about it so long it became a reality. You know, the more we talk about something, the more we draw on it. It's as if you're feeding it. You're getting up in the morning and just talk about how you feel, how you're tired, how you won't make it. You're defeating yourself. You're digging your own hole. Don't talk about the problem. Talk about the solution. Scripture says, let the weak say, I am strong. Notice it doesn't say, let the weak talk about their weakness. Let the weak call five friends and discuss their weakness. Let the weak complain about their weakness. No, it says in the fact, let the weak say exactly the opposite of how they feel. In other words, don't talk about the way you are. Talk about the way you want to be. If you get up in the morning and feel tired and lethargic, instead of complaining more than ever, you need to declare, I am strong in the Lord. I am full of enemy. My strength is being renewed. This will be a great day. When you do that, you'll not only change how you feel, it'll also change your attitude. You won't go out with a weak, defeated victim mentality. You will go out with a victor mentality, with spring in your step, with a smile on your face, with your shoulders back. 
Those words can literally help lift your spirit and cause you to see yourself and see your circumstances in a whole new light. You are one of a kind. You are a masterpiece. You are a prized possession. When you wake up in the morning and look in the mirror instead of getting depressed, instead of saying, Oh man, look how old I look. Look at this gray hair. Look at these wrinkles. You need to smile and say, Good morning, you beautiful thing. Good morning, you handsome thing. Good morning, you blessed, prosperous, successful, strong, talented, creative, constipate, secure, disciplined, focused, highly favored child of the Most High God. Get it on the inside. Speak faith over your future.